Welcome to Dr. BT's Chemistry Essentials, A-Level Chemistry Made Easy. In this video we're going to be looking at the hydrolysis of esters and we're going to look at that under two conditions, under acidic conditions and under alkaline conditions. So before we look at the hydrolysis of an ester, we're going to look at the formation of an ester question that links to a video in this series. And what I want you to do is draw the ester and the byproduct of this reaction of this particular compound with this particular acyl chloride. So pause the video here and have a go. Okay, so the answer to this is going to be coming up now. And well done if you've got this as your ester and HCl as the byproduct. If you didn't, I'm just going to quickly walk through it. So first of all, we have two reactants here. Our acyl chloride is our acyl component. And the way we know this is it contains a carbonyl group. Now, some people might be focused in on this reactant and say, well, that also contains a carbonyl group. But actually, this has two functional groups. It has an ester group here, and it has an alcohol group. And actually, the ester group doesn't react at all. The only the alcohol group is compatible with this group here, this acyl group, which is the acid chloride. This is bifunctional, meaning it's got two functional groups. It's only the alcohol that's going to combine with the acyl. These two react together to form an ester, and because the acyl is an acyl chloride, the product is hydrochloric acid. Let's just remove the ester because we're not going to be using this when we couple these two together to make the ester. And, and so now we've found our matched pair. So sometimes when you're dealing with bifunctional groups, you've just got to find which of those functional groups in that bifunctional group is the one that actually would react with the functional group on the other molecule. So in this case, the alcohol has a reaction with the acyl chloride, and that's why we've gone down this route. So in order to draw the actual product, we know that the acyl chloride is the carbonyl containing component of the ester also. In the previous video on making esters in this series, you break the C-X bond where X is either oxygen or chlorine. And so we're going to break this bond here. So that me that goes to show everything else that keeps with that, which is the CH3 here, also remains in the actual ester. It's this carbon of this that then attaches to the alcohol oxygen and you remove the hydrogen from the alcohol and everything else that belongs to that is the other part of the molecule. And so you can see that's that part there. And then the hydrogen that was once there and the chlorine have joined together to form the byproduct. The subject of this video is to look at when we have the ester, what happens when we try to hydrolyze it? So hydrolysis is adding water and we're adding water to the ester. So if we take our generic ester configuration, we have here the alkyl groups or the R groups, and they are different in this case. And then we have our ester functional linkage. Under acidic conditions, the bond that breaks is this CO bond. Again, just like we've looked at before in esterification, the carbonyl is really key. You look at the carbonyl group, and then you find the CX bond, in this case it's a CO bond, and you break that bond. I'm referring it to a CX bond is because later on when we look at polymers and hydrolysis of polymers, this atom can actually be nitrogen in that case. So this is our sort of generic model. Third step is to then draw the two resulting fragments. So you can either do this in your mind's eye when you become more expert level, but what's the best thing to do is imagine you broke this and just draw that fragment here, leave a space and then draw this fragment to the side. What you do is you find the alcohol, so you can see that this is reminiscent of an alcohol here, it's got the oxygen there, and you add a hydrogen to it. The next question to ask yourself is, are you undergoing the hydrolysis under acid or alkaline conditions? Obviously here we're looking at hot aqueous acid. So then we add an OH to the C double bond O fragment. Where you can remember this is that you always get an acid fragment in acid conditions. 
Now, under alkaline conditions, you actually get exactly the same process in one and two. So you're going to find your ester. You're going to locate the carbonyl group in here that belongs to the ester group. You're going to break the CX bond and draw the two resulting fragments. Then you're going to add the hydrogen to the alcohol. Then, because it's under alkaline conditions, the product fragment here is going to be different. In this case, you add just an O minus, not an OH, under aqueous conditions. And this forms the carboxylate. One way you can remember this is that obviously the sodium hydroxide here is a source of hydroxide ions. And then that gives you an O minus as the product. So a negative for a negative. Whereas obviously we've got an acid for an acid. The reason you get a carboxylate here, because under the alkaline conditions, the hydrogen of the carboxylic acid is deprotonated. And so we end up with a carboxylate. Now, this is really key as a fundamental starting point for when we start to look at the hydrolysis of polymers, which is a bit more complicated. Okay, what I'd like you to do now is to try and put some of this into practice. So you have an ester here, and I want you to draw the products for both the acidic hydrolysis and then the alkaline hydrolysis. So pause the video here and have a go. Okay, so your answer for this under acidic conditions should be as so. And you can see here, what we've done is we've added the OH on because it's under acidic conditions onto the carbonyl containing component and then a hydrogen onto here. And what we did to get to these two fragments to begin with, what we did is we located the carbonyl in step one and broke this CO bond. And so this part here is this part with the OH added on. This part here, we've added that hydrogen on. Under alkaline conditions, your product should look like so. Very similar, but this time your alcohol, again, is exactly the same, but our carboxylate is formed because of the alkaline conditions. And again, we followed this exact same process. Okay, so here's just three simple questions that are going to cover some of the ester hydrolysis and making of esters. So pause the video here and have a go. Okay, we're going to go through the answers now. Question one, you've got this ester here. It's a benzoate ester because we've got this benzene ring in there. Um, it's under acidic conditions, as you can see from the sulfuric acid. We're refluxing it. So we're going to add water across it. Okay, that carbonyl, that's our C double bond O. And then look for the CO bond, the CX bond. Remember, the CC bond will stay intact. On the left hand side fragment here, imagine you know, I've cut this bond and that's this one here, and then the right hand side fragment. So under acidic conditions, we add and alkaline conditions for that matter, we add the hydrogen to the alcohol bit, regardless. But then because it's acidic conditions, with the carbonyl, we add an OH on there. So our two fragments, carboxylic acid and an alcohol because it's acidic conditions. Question two, this is exactly the same. It's an ester hydrolysis. It's in the carbonyl group and then looking for a CO bond. We break that and then we draw the two fragments. Make life easy for yourself. So as they're drawn left to right here, do that in terms of the fragments. So here is our left hand side fragment. Our right hand side fragment is to this carbon here and everything including. Remember this whole bond has been broken. We end up with that. Then as before, this is an alkaline condition, but it doesn't matter. We add the hydrogen onto the alcohol every time, whether it be acidic or alkaline. But because it's an alkaline condition, because of the sodium hydroxide, the carbonyl group of the product becomes a carboxylate. So we're adding an oxygen with a negative charge on there. So that's our big difference, whether it be alkaline or acidic conditions. And then question three is a bit of a curveball. This is from the previous video on making esters. So if you've not come across that, go and have a look at it. This here is an alcohol and this here is a acid anhydride. I chose this because it looks kind of like an ester in terms of we've got a C double bond O and an O bond here. 
But whereas an ester at this point is just a carbon, an acid anhydride has a carbonyl group on that carbon. Compare these ester groups to this acid anhydride, you can see that that oxygen there, and that oxygen and that oxygen, the carbon next door to the oxygens, ester does not have a double bond to oxygen, but in an acid anhydride does have a double bond to oxygen. So this doesn't undergo, this isn't a hydrolysis reaction. An alcohol plus an acid anhydride under reflux conditions is actually an esterification reaction, making an ester here. When we're making esters, we are looking for an alcohol with an acyl. So this is obviously our acyl component. We look for one of the carbonyls. It doesn't matter because this is symmetrical. And with this, what we are doing is we are cutting a CX bond, just a bit like the ester hydrolysis. So we're going to cut this. And then everything which contains that carbonyl in is one of the fragments of that ester group. The alcohol, what we do is we remove a hydrogen and everything else that remains is the other part of the ester group. So what I'm going to do is draw this but orientate it in the direction that I need. So we put an O here, which is this oxygen here. And then I know that's attached to a carbon that's attached to two carbons like so. So I'm just going to draw that in. And then our third step is with this oxygen to make a bond to the carbon of the C double bond O bond, which I've got here. This carbon, this oxygen, I'm going to join those together. And that makes our ester. Went through this in a lot of detail in the other video in this series called Making Esters Esterification. And then with the alcohol and an acid anhydride, the product you get is everything else that was part of the acid anhydride. So we're going to just draw this whole section out. And that couples with the hydrogen that you then removed from here. Remember, with chemical reactions, you can't create or destroy anything. So it's got to be there. So you end up with the byproduct being a carboxylic acid. And just remember, all of this was covered in a lot more detail uh, in the other video on esterification. And that also went through alcohols, not only with acid and hydrides, but with acyl chlorides and also with carboxylic acids in order to make esters. Okay, so this video has been focusing on the hydrolysis of esters. If you found it useful, ensure that you like the video and then ensure that you subscribe to the YouTube channel for new videos as and when they're uploaded.